Well, to discuss the report in more detail, I'm joined by KPMG's Head of Asia and International Markets, Doug Ferguson. Doug, thanks so much for your time this afternoon. Thanks for having me. Doug, a 36% fall is pretty staggering. How much have Chinese government restrictions impacted investment in Australia? Oh, it's been, it's been a very significant factor behind the fall, no doubt about it. Uh, when we surveyed uh, 60 or so Chinese executives, 80% of them said that, that this was a real issue that they were facing in getting capital out of China. So there's no doubt about it, so it's a big one. Investment in mining was just 5.6% of that total overall investment mm. of about $8 billion. That's down 90% on 2017. A huge change. What's mm. behind that? Well, 2017, there was the um, the uh, Yan Coal acquisition of Rio Tinto's Hunter Valley assets, and that was a, that was a mega, mega sized transaction. So, in 2018, we just haven't had anything of that scale come through. Um, having said that, there's a really good story around uh, TNC, um, which is a lithium uh, miner that's built a state-of-the-art processing plant in WA worth $700 million and will create lots of employment as lithium is processed and then exported to China for batteries. So, you know, it's, it's a pause of a year, I suppose, but uh, there's still lots of Chinese interest in mining, that's for sure. Healthcare took number one spot in 2018. Has this been driven mm. by demand for things like vitamins and minerals? It started off with vitamins and minerals and then probiotics and, and now it's moving into um, medical devices, you know, so whether it's liver cancer treatment or whether it's uh, IVF um, treatment, fertility treatment, uh, there's, there's, that's what's really sort of been a very really interesting story. But yeah, healthcare has jumped out of really being a, a very quiet story two years ago to being the number one sector and 42% of the total investment in 2018. And again, I was listening to the, the previous interview, um, Australia's science researchers do incredible work. Um, and the Chinese know that and uh, they're very interested in, in acquiring uh, that technology but also products and then building their businesses back in China. The change in Chinese investment is noticeable. Take example, uh, property prices. We've seen property come back a, a, a long mm. way. How significant is the fall in Chinese investment for our economy broadly? Well, the, let's deal with the property first. It's a 31% it's a fall, uh, and the, the key drivers behind that was a, a real slowdown in Chinese individuals um, getting their uh, money out of China to settle and to buy apartments. Then there's also the Australian um, you know, experience with, um, with too much supply coming on at one time. But this is, you know, China is, a, China is a very significant investor in Australia and has been for the last decade. So we certainly uh, wouldn't want to see this, this trend continue. But at the same time, we have to understand that China's playing a global game with the Belt and Road Initiative. And, and a lot of the money that we would have otherwise received is now moving into Central Asia and Eastern Europe. So um, we don't need to be too hard on ourselves, but it's certainly a moment to reflect upon. And let's hope that we can get back into um, being a really attractive place for China to invest. With that in mind, do you think these are the kinds of numbers that we can expect to see into the future? Do we need to make adjustments into where our emphasis is going to attract that uh, investment from China? Well, look, I think that the, um, the investment that we're getting from the private Chinese companies is, is really a positive story and investing into new sectors like, like healthcare, you know, education, tourism, all of the sort of health and well-being sectors, that's going to continue to grow. It's whether we can continue to attract major Chinese investment in new mining assets. And the big question is infrastructure. Are we going to get involved with the Belt and Road Initiative in Australia or are we going to uh, be comfortable with Chinese companies investing into, into core infrastructure assets? Doug Ferguson from KPMG, thanks so much for your insights. Thanks for having me, Rachel.